Good morning, everyone, or good evening, or good afternoon. Um, I know it's afternoon for some of you. If Benjamin here, I know it's early morning for him, depending on if he's awake. It's early <laughs> morning and a day ahead. Yeah, but it's like be three or four a.m. where he is. So tell us what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> what is the future? Tell us the future. Ooh, it's minus sixteen here. And was I just saying I want to go out in the woods? No. <laughs> um, Greg says it's bright and sunny where he is. It's also it, bright and sunny where you are, Max. It so is very are... bright and sunny here. It is. And sometimes when it's bright and sunny, it really gets cold. Hmm. That seems right like there. a contradiction. Doesn't uh, it? Doesn't it? <laughs> you, can, you can stand in the sun and pretend you're warm, but it really doesn't work when it's minus 16. <laughs> Hillary yeah, it says doesn't, the, it doesn't mean anything when it's below freezing. Hillary says the snow is melting in Wales. Oh wow! Well, you enjoy that nice melting snow. I love snow, so I live in a good place. A good mm -hmm. place. And then my my mom says it's right. It's warm and bright in Florida. Then we have Kay and and Chris F and Tommy. And then Benjamin, look, he's here. He's awake. Kay is trying to taunt me into talking about that that dessert we aren't allowed to talk about anymore. No, we can't talk about that dessert anymore. Never, so ever. But blueberries! <laughs> you bad girl. Pie. I couldn't help myself. Okay. So, Benjamin said it's hot since it is, it is summer for Benjamin because, you know, the that thing that happens with the hemispheres that's different seasons. <laughs> we love you, Sarah. We do love you, Sarah. You are so cute. <laughs> uh, look, Lewis Kessler, first time for a live cast. Hello, Lewis. Hey. I've, I've seen you on Lewis. Twitter, Lewis. He, hey, Lewis. he does some tweeting for us. He tweets yeah. about Wiki Tree. I've seen him. And Lewis is a genetic genealogist who is a Canadian. Bring on the Canadian genetic genealogist. Yay. And then we have, oh, the How We Got Here podcast. I know his name, but it's blinking from me right now. On, tell me, tell me your name, How We Got Here podcast. I also see you also chat on Facebook sometimes. Then we have Aunt Peggy from Oklahoma. And then, yeah. It snowed in, my mom says it snowed in Miami in 1977. It snowed in Tallahassee in 2019. 2018? I forget the year. Brian Nash, there we go. I knew it started with the B. That was very Brian, I am supposed to be talking to you, and I have been covered up with work, and I need to call you, so I'm good. Don't worry. I will call you. From Prince Edward Island. Yes. Yep. Yes. He has a really cool podcast. If you haven't listened so you knew to it. You knew him from the beginning. You knew his name. Why didn't you say it? I was enjoying your struggle. Because <laughs> I almost said Bob. I was like, Bob? Bob would work. It's close. It starts Bob with the B. Work. <clears throat> hey Sarah, good morning. Good morning. I have a question for you. What's my what's the question? Did you answer the question of the week this week? I did on Facebook. You did. Would you like to share with us? Okay. Let's do that. Ta-da. Ta-da. So it's, what are your DNA ethnicities? Join us now. Ethnicity estimates. So we had oh, so I posted mine. Ta-da! Those are mine. Iberian mine Spanish. Spanish does not um, surprise me at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Northwest, North and Western Europe doesn't surprise me. Irish, Scottish, and Welsh, twenty point seven percent. Eastern European does not surprise me either. Italian. You must be related to Chris somewhere, and Central Asia does not surprise me either. That that looks that looks very much like you. 
You look, you look like you. <laughs> then we, because I, so I sent a whole bunch of people. Just so you know, we always post a question of the week on Facebook as well, so you're always able to answer there. We had a whole bunch of people post their after me. A whole bunch of people posted their ethnicity estimates on the from the different um, DNA places. And that answer. Norway and Sweden and whoever that is, that's uh, probably Viking. Viking. Yes. Looking at the rest of their estimates. Who was that? Who Don. Was that? Don. Poteet. Poteet. Sorry. Western North Carolina settlers. Yeah. yeah. Poteet. My, I had a, well, my mom just did her DNA and her, she had, because she did it on Ancestry while I did it in my heritage. She had the Pennsylvania settlers, one of them, yeah, like yeah. one of those groups. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Ancestry is really good about picking up on our recent Ancestry because they are looking at, at people, they can see the migration patterns. They missed some of my in-between. They have my ancient, ancient stuff really good, and they have my trip across the Atlantic really good to the southeast, but they missed some of my people that ended up in, in New England, Connecticut, and those places, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like they jumped over a bit. And they, so this, is a, this is actually one of my cousins. Oh, cool. Mm hmm Like my second cousin, one time removed, he posted his DNA. Sweden. So, uh, That's mm -hmm. the big difference there. He yeah. Had, yeah. Probably what's, cool. sim it's probably mostly the, the Europe, because I don't have any of Ireland or anything. So it's the England and West, Northwestern Europe that, on the Georgia, Florida settlers, I probably would have that too. Yeah. But it's from so my grandma's side. Not These are all ancestry. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you want to pull up the question of the week from the chat? From the yes, I can. can. Yes, I can. Would you please? There were 60, 64 cool answers in our stuff on uh, the uh, the question of the week. What are your DNA ethnicity estimates? Which is a bit of a misnomer because ethnicity doesn't really have anything to do with our. DNA estimates. Our, our DNA uh, is really about where our origins were, and it's where the group of people that is us, uh, as we worked our way out of Africa, uh, it's where our group of people happened to stop along their way and where certain changes happened on our DNA. So it's really not about ethnicity at all. It's about how we changed as we moved along as we traveled on the path to who we are today. So having ethnicity in that, um, some companies put that in there. Uh, FTDNA uses origins, I think, uh, living DNA. I think a lot of companies use origins, but I think that uh, Ancestry likes the ethnicity question because it brings more people in. It, it, people understand that better than saying it's an origin. So six of one, half dozen another, it's a marketing thing. So F ethnicity, our, our origins estimates are based on who we're testing against. So if you're testing in uh, Ancestry, they did an upgrade uh, not too long ago where they had lots and lots and lots of Scottish estimates come up. And that was, uh, it just kind of shows you that there are a lot of people in Ancestry who claim Scottish heritage who are also in, uh, in Ancestry. And there are a lot of people in uh, FTDNA that are just Northwest European and have Irish. And so if I look at my estimates on Ancestry, it says I have Scottish where I don't really have a lot of Scottish based on the paper trail, based on all of the other companies' estimates of me. I don't have that much Scottish. I'm Irish in that regard. So it's interesting to look at the, the pool of information in a data set is who you're comparing to. So if Chris Barriello got all of his Italian cousins to test and test only on a specific company, and there would be millions we know, then his whole Italian thing would be the biggest estimate that would show up for people. But unfortunately, Italians haven't tested a lot until just recently. Their, their, their numbers and their estimates are growing, so that's good. If you're and looking then, for friends, a, what's that? I have a cousin that um, her four grandparents are all from Portugal, and that's where all of her roots are. We've traced her her branches back really far, and because there aren't a lot of Portuguese testers, it said she was only like 51% or 49%. Right. It was right around right. half. 
Yeah, I have a little bit of something showing up in the Azores, which is Portuguese, for one of my DN one of my cousins in their DNA matches, which I thought was fascinating. Who lived in the Azores, really? Um, <clears throat> so it, it's interesting to have that kind of if you if you understand as ethnicity estimates, it's a lot of fun, or origins estimates, it's a lot of fun. Just always remember it's an estimate and it's gonna be changing sands because as more people test and add their information to a data set, your information is gonna change because that's who you're comparing to. So that's a lot of fun. So tons and tons and tons of people highlighted that by posting their estimates from all the different companies they've tested with. Um, if you scroll down, um, you might see that, Sarah, where people posted theirs. I know Darlene Athy Hill. Hillary, did you post all your different estimates in yours? I think you did. Um, okay, so in here are, um, oh, that's just two 2020s. Uh, but a lot of people did that. I can tell you as a little trick, um, Jedmatch has... Um, Yes, lots of uh, Scottish overlap of English borders in Ireland. And there's also ancient migration patterns. There was a, uh, a, pe a paper who came out about a month and a half, two months ago, that actually showed the women who went from Scotland to Ireland and then on to the Scottish and Irish influx into the to the Carolinas and Georgia area, which is my people, which I love that, that somebody wrote a paper about that. But yeah, there's lots of overlap. There's also a lot of travel between Western Scotland and Ireland over history because there's only 12 miles between those coasts at that point. Um, and oh, so Chris is throwing out Italian names and I can't, the Gullos and the Capo Biancos. There you go. So a lot of people are answering, 80% of Europeans have Mongolian ancestors. There's a lot of people who are related to Genghis Khan. That is absolutely correct because Genghis Khan, like Charlemagne, like uh, Nile of the Nine hostages, they were all prolific progenitors of their families. They fathered many, 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 many children. So, and Ben Franklin was quite prolific as well, but I don't know that he has a lots of kids, but I know that he was quite the ladies man. If you look at his picture, you're like, I, I don't know why, but you know, he was. <laughs> so it's cool to look at these. Here's one that has their ancestry DNA, their 23andMe, their family tree DNA, and their my heritage. And this is Darlene Athy Hill, uh, who is a genetic genealogist. And she's got up her different estimates. And you can see that, that they're, they're, they're different. Um, they're different. So you're going to look at, at different places. You're going to have different people in the pool. Um, what I was going to say was Jedmatch has really good uh, ethnicity um, and um, admixture tools where they can go um, really deep into to exploring uh, possibly uh, ancient uh, American uh, ancestries, the Native American ancestry. So check out, Randy Seaver wrote a great blog about how to use ancestries, admixture tools. So look up Randy uh, Seaver, who is a great wiki treer, and look up his blog about how to do ancestries, uh, admixture tools, if you want to really drill down on some portion of your ancestry. You have to upload your uh, Jedmatch, your information to Jedmatch, but it, it would be cool to see. Uh, where would we post our ethnicities? Debbie Numchek Root is asking that. Um, you know, Wikitree doesn't really post ethnicities. Um, yeah. It, it really shows just, up in your tree. Mm -hmm. in your this is just in the big tree. question. People are posting their ethnicities. So, what'd you say, uh, Sarah? Oh, that, that word, I mean, people are posting their ethnicities for the question of the week. Right. Um, so you can do that on this D2G post or in Facebook, but there's not really a dedicated place to post your ethnicities. And and it's, it would be kind of silly to do that because it would change so, so much. So mm -hmm. it would change so often based on the amount of people that are testing that it would be something you'd have to really keep up on to keep it current. I don't know if that would be a good move for for uh, Wikitree to do that. That would also, well, it, it could also be misused, it being able to do that. <clears throat> Who is that, Sarah Rojas? That's me. Who is that? This? Yeah. That's me. Who is that? 
That's me. That's her. That's me. Um, I was just showing the, the the Jed match thing. I don't know if it'll open. You have to log in. Probably. Good. Just log in real quick. Get your. There you go. This is Jedmatch, so it links. You can access it directly from WikiTree. So that's yes, that's really you have, cool. If you have created a um, what you call it, a Jedmatch account. So you see the uh, the little thing over there that says "Add Mixture Heritage" or "Add Mix Add, mi Add Mixture Oracle with Population Search." Oh yes, mm -hmm. those are the two. Uh, those are the two ones. I usually do "Add Mixture for Heritage" just to find out about my. Uh, it might. Which, which one should I click? Uh, probably European. So let me. European. Okay. Yeah, I gotta. K twelve, I think. Uh, no, that's good. Okay. That's, just add mixture proportions. That's fine. Let's see what happens. Why do I enter my kit number? It's already there. It's already there. <laughs> that's so funny. I do that too. I don't copy it from. Um, Jedmatch, I copy it from Wikitree. Enter your ethnicity. I don't want to. Okay, let's do that. Does it, will it work? Hmm. No, it doesn't want to work. It doesn't like me. Okay, we tried. <laughs> so it's it's fun. Oh, there, it is. there we go. What's your big, your North Atlantic, your Baltic. Interesting. Um, well, Baltic is, um, is it, that, that fits with some of the stuff. They just name it a different way, probably closer to the realistic thing that uh, socio uh, not a sociologist, uh, uh, an anthropologist would do. Uh, Baltic, Western Mediterranean fits perfectly. West Asian, that fits. Eastern Mediterranean, now that's interesting. A lot of people don't realize that Iberia had a very big influx of uh, um, people from the Mediterranean come and live in the Iberian Peninsula. So finding Eastern Mediterranean or Western Mediterranean in your Iberian results is not unusual at all. Uh, Red Sea would not be unusual for, because of that same factor there. Uh, Amerindian, you've got, uh, do you actually show Amerindian? Yeah, you do. 1.12%. Yeah. And, um, Oceania, that's um, Australia and, and New Zealand and down in that area. That's pretty cool. So yeah, so Jedmatch has a really cool ethnicity uh, tracker kind of thing. And you can you can mess around with different ones. I suggest reading Randy Seaver's. If you just type in Randy Seaver, Jedmatch Admixture, you'll find his really wonderful um, talk about how to really drill down on different kinds of aspects of your origins. So Max, for mine, my half of mine is Western European and North Sea. Yeah, you want to show it? Sure. Sarah has to stop. Well, once Mindy shows hers, then I'll take, she can take over. Coffee break. Everybody coffee break. Coffee break. Oh, I don't think Mindy has shown her mug that features uh, both Mags and I on it. <laughs> <laughs> this okay, is yours. Wow, yours, right is, yours is pink and purple. Um, North Sea, Western. I can't read that. It's so small. Um, where are we? That's cool. You have a pretty, you have a very, very rainbow. You're, you're a wonderful hodgepodge of people. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Heinz 57. Heinz 57. I was waiting for somebody to make the, I'm an American mutt. I was going to say it. I was going to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Say I was it, like, we're all it. mutts. We're all mutts. American mutts. My dad's Ooh, side doesn't dad have a lot of differences in it, but my mom's is that. just all over the place. Mm. Oh, am I showing my mug? Oh yes, look, it has look, it has Mindy and Mags, and then I'm on there too on the other side. Look, there's me, and then there's Julie. Gotta dance. Mindy thinks about us every day because we're on her mug. We're on her mug. <laughs> okay, so let's. Unless anybody has the chart on Jedmatch. 
Wait, what'd you say, Max? How did you get to the chart on Jeb Max? Tommy Bach wants to know. The oh, Bayou, uh, Bayou Bingo wants to know. Um, how did I get there? Well, like first I clicked my little Jed Match ID from WikiTree, so then that opened up Jed Match. I guess we can go, go back that. and do that again because it'll show them quickly how to do it. So then once I clicked that, it came mm -hmm. to my I logged in and it came to my page. And, um, and then over here. Admixture over here in right the there. DNA applications set part, there's an admixture heritage. And I clicked that. Can you guys see when I highlighted it? I'm not sure if you can actually see it. And I clicked Eurogenes. I guess you can play around with it. Continues. Yep. Did it make me enter my kit number again? Yes. There you go. <laughs> you can also enter your ethnicity. I'm not sure. What will happen? Yeah. Benjamin Molesworth says he hasn't gotten a DNA test yet because his sister did. But Benjamin... If you want to get a DNA test with Family Tree DNA, which is now part of an Australian company, you would be able to see your father's line, your Y DNA. So I would suggest that you do and check it out on your Y. You may find some surprises. You never know. I need to do my dad's Y DNA test. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to do a test and find out I was a monkey or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so since we have, this was very informational. I love, you know, learning learn new stuff. I didn't know how to do this, now I do, so. Oh, cool, cool. So yeah, that was the question of the week. And instead of going through and looking at everybody's estimates, I actually did look at every single estimate. And it, you know what it drove home for me? Is that Wikitreeers are such a diverse group of genealogists and not just based in the United States, like, all over the world and and karen lowe says that i'm 16 percent blueberry pie you better believe that <laughs> karen you live in salt lake city so if if i get to go to salt lake city again you have to bring me blueberry pie just saying and that way i can share it with people who've been wanting to have blueberry pie with me like julie ricketts and sarah i think, I think we i think we tried to, i think we tried to um look up a, a pie place if we, we have to go again so we can just go eat all the pie yeah karen karen's like got a cute little place all right cool okay. oh and benjamin Moles, molesworth says he's rhubarb pie have you got rhubarb coming up right now benjamin be about the time yeah okay so i guess we've covered the the dna part my mom says she's 50 percent banana cream pie i just saw that that's funny <laughs> <laughs> we need a pie-a-thon. I'm for that. I'm all for that. Will we just eat pie the whole time? Yeah. And or we, we would... like just put it on the table and go <laughs> and come up with blueberries all over our face. And we just live cast. Everybody will come on the live cast and all we do is eat pie. And see who finishes first, but it'd be hard to test, you know, because somebody could be down here going, and we'd never see it. Them no, but the, the, but the real trick is they will also have to wiki tree while they're eating pie. Yes. So it's multitask at the best. You have to cover your keyboard in a, in a plastic cover. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Now let's that was talk fun. about... I enjoyed the, looking at everybody's origins. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. So, okay. So this week our profiles of the week were country western stars um had a whole bunch our main connection point was charlie pride Ooh. Um, and he just passed away right uh, yeah back in december mm -hmm. um so he was a musician guitarist business owner and a baseball player and he passed away actually from covid complications oh unfortunately um, he was one of the only three African Americans to become a member of the Grand Ole Opry. Grand Old Opry. Old Opry. Opry. Go. And he was inducted into the Country Hall Music Hall of Fame in 2000. And then he was in the um, Negro League Baseball. He was a pitcher for the Memphis Red Sox and the Birmingham Black Barons of the Negro League from 1953 to 1958. 
So that's pretty cool. So a musician and a baseball player. So that was our main connection point. And then we also had a whole other 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 ones. Patsy Cline, uh, dream pop singer. Oh. The first fe first female solo artist admitted to the Country Music Hall of Fame. And also the first female country artist to get a top billing for a show. Um, and she actually died in a plane crash during foul weather in 1963. And then we also have Hank Williams. Senior. Oh, yeah. I guess senior because he has a junior. Well, and Hank Jr. just passed away, right? Or uh, am I wrong? I don't, well, it doesn't let me hover over it, so I guess he's. No, it was Charlie Daniels. Oh, I, I've got to get my people correct. <laughs> um, so he, so Williams recorded 35 singles, uh, five released post -humus, posthumously. Post posthumously. There you go. Thank you. And that would place in the top 10 of the bill. That would. Cool. Wait, hold on. I messed. Williams recorded 35 singles that would place in the top 10 Billboard Country and Western bestsellers chart, including 11 that ranked number one. So he had a lot of top hits. And then we also have Johnny Cash. He That's married a lot of people with the letter V, two Vivians and a Valerie. I'm I am uh, I'm closest related to him, and I thought that I would be closest related to him through my deep Appalachian family, and I'm not, uh, hmm. which was interesting. Interesting. And he is, he is his title is he's the man in black, and he's also a military veteran, served in the Air Force from 1950 to 1954, and then he died in Nashville, Tennessee, in 2003. Johnny Cash is a really inspiring person because he dealt with his devils very publicly. And it's just, it's really so much fun to see somebody deal with, with health issues that he had, his mental health issues, that he was able to sustain and be happy in life. Mm -hmm. Then we have Rig Lindsay, Australian country music singer. That's pretty cool. He he mastered the harmonica before commencing school. He learned how to play the banjo, the mandolin, the guitar, and the fiddle. That's pretty. So he was he knew how to play a lot of a lot of instruments. And he, he hosted a TV show. I don't know if you guys, anybody, I guess Benjamin, the country and Western hour. Anybody else from you're familiar with that? I don't know. I am not. <laughs> I am. You are? Yep. Uh, My uh, grandfather, Hunt, on Sunday mornings, uh, there'd be a fire in the fireplace and my we would go out and we'd fish, we'd bring home catfish or whatever we got bought, caught. And he, we, my grandmother would cook it, and we would sit and watch the Country Western Hour, the uh, Porter Wagner Show, the Morning Gospel Hour. That was my Sunday mornings at uh, my grandparents' house. So, yeah, and apparently he was also the first Australian to appear in Nashville's Grand Ole Opry, and he is recognized with a plaque on Nashville's Walkway of Stars. Yay! Woo! The next one we have is Slim Dusty, also another Australian. Uh, let's see, he was an Australian cultural icon and one of the country's most awarded stars, and his career nearly spanning nearly seven decades. Oh, look, he was a dairy farmer. Look, we have a little stickle sticker for dairy farmer. That's cute. Little cow. <laughs> I've never seen these stickers before. <laughs> Gordon and Joy enjoyed 51 years of marriage adventure. I like the stickers. Those That's are fun. fun. Mm hmm Look, he has a commemorative coin. Are those still in rotation? Can you get a Slim Dusty commemorative coin? Yes, no. I bet they'd cost you some money now, though. They look gold. Mm hmm 
maybe maybe uh, uh, Benjamin Molesworth could yeah send you one. We have we have an Australian watching right now. Look at another one. We have Ruby Hunter. So she was, let's see, very long, very well written biography. I don't read this one ahead of time. Let's see. Anybody know anything interesting about her? I don't know. But apparently she was in a, her mother died of pneumonia. Um, raised by her maternal grandparents, and she was in a fringe camp, and she worked in a hostel. Is she indigenous? That's what it looked, yeah, that's what it's, yeah, indigenous Australian. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Odd, though, that there's, I mean, I guess since she's a, a star that she would have her picture up, but um, that's a no-no. Um, most Aboriginal Australians do not. It's against their religion or against their belief system to hmm. have a likeness of themselves appear somewhere. It's just kind of hard not to if you're in the country western world. Yeah. <clears throat> so she released her first album in 1994. Um, and she earned the Best Female Performer at the Deadly Awards, the Deadly Awards in 2000. Her song spoke of experience of many First Nations people, particularly those of the stolen generations and young women. Uh, very cool, very cool. And we have a couple more. We have Don Messer, Canadian. Oh, Canada. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have Stomp and Tom Connors? That's the big one here. I don't know. <laughs> Apparently he was inducted into the Canadian Country Music Association Hall of Honor in 1985, and then the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame in 1989. Yay! Woo! And then we have one other one, Tammy Richie? See Tammy Wynette. She didn't go by Richie. Oh, uh, just because it didn't have, oh, okay. It's, I see, Tammy. Tammy Wynette, there you go. So she, she achieved great fame as a country singer. And she played the piano, guitar. And she was also called the first lady of country music. Sold more than 30 million records. And then she was the first female country artist to sell a million albums. She performed with Dolly Parton and Loretta Lynn. Yeah, her um, Stand By Your Man is like one of the biggest country songs mm -hmm. ever. Stand then, by your man. <laughs> and then she was elected into the Country Music Hall of Fame after her death, which was in 1998. And those are all of our profiles of the week. Let's see who I was most closely connected to. Let's see, I want to know. Well, I have somebody with a fun name. Oh, I guess I am uh, Johnny Cash, too. That's because we're cousins, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Look, it's literally, oh, look how look how cool that is. Literally just one, his wife. I'm, Ooh, I'm you are his Appalachian. Wife. Appalachian. I can say it however I want to because I am that. Appalachian. <laughs> is that how the rule goes? You can say it however you want if that's what you want. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I grew up hearing it so maybe I'm deeper Appalachian than Karen Lowe to oh, Karen Lowe <clears throat> I am uh, that's cool I am related directly to one of his wives cool cool that is cool that is pretty cool okay so let's look at the photos of the week now did anybody say who they're closely most closely connected to in the chat while I was doing stuff or no I guess not. Who are you most related to, people? I want to know. Don't tell us, Joanna, call us, because we already know. And Benjamin said that it wasn't real gold. It's still a $1 coin. Oh, so oh does OK. It. So they had one job looking at the chat. It's widely circulated, then. That's fun. 
Okay, so let's look we at the have, photos. We have the queen on all of ours. All our coinage has the queen and some loons and a so polar we, bear or two. All right, so the theme for the photos this week is children. Chris Ferriello says Hank Williams. Okay. Oh, cute. Well, that is a cute one. The class. Daughters of Rick and Bessie Keen. Oh, that's a cute one. Lewis, John, and James Dodge. Mansell Lacey School Group. I was going to say, if that's somebody's family, poor woman. <laughs> Looks like those little kids, I guess she was moving too much over here. Her head is blurry. <laughs> Looking side-eyed at this little dog thing. At least that's what it looks like. I think the dog wants the, the doll. Yeah, I think it's a doll too, but it's just yeah. the expression. <laughs> uh, look at them. They're cute. Kara Lowe says that she's closest relationship she has is to Patsy Klein, And she says, I'll take walking after midnight for 14 degrees. <laughs> Well, that's a cute one. I like how they're looking not at the camera. You know, I just I I just want to say they look like they're getting ready to break out into some something fun and and um just you know like instigative like we're gonna get out of this pose and we're gonna go run around chair for fifteen minutes. And their last name is Partridge. Partridge. Well, Reminds me of the partridge and a parish tree song. I was thinking of the partridge family. There we go. There's our difference in age showing up. Um, <laughs> Royal Keith says he's closest related to Johnny Cash. Charles Platt says the Bellamy brothers. They weren't in the list, Charles. No. Mary's That's a picture. Mm-hmm. Like okay, that. one sister is looking at the other. What does the sister have in her hand that the other sister's looking at? Something. Uh, what? Something I don't know. It's not, I don't know. Look, she's missing a sock, too. Uh-oh. I bet <laughs> her sister put her sock down her dress. <laughs> I have <laughs> sock. Okay. Next page. Bobby Boy and Cousin. Tommy Buck is uh, Patsy Klein. Those look like the same. This is the same family. This is the same family. I'm pretty sure. I have to go back and double check. This looks like the same family. That does. Absolutely. They're having watermelon on the porch. Oh, that's cute. Welcome, Charles. <laughs> That is cute. Look at mm -hmm. that basket chair. Yeah. You know how I always go on about the background. The background is kind of interesting behind that mm -hmm. one too. This one too. That's a good picture. And what else do we have? The Courtois family. I got some interest. She has an interesting hat. We have. Oh, this one's labeled. A little blurry. Benjamin's changing his story. He says he's now closest related to June Carter, who was married to Johnny Cash. So we're each related to Johnny Cash. We're each related to one of Johnny Cash's wives. That's a neat picture. Mm hmm. On a bench. So it says, My grandmother, Georgianne Garrett, center surrounded by her children, family portrait taken after the death of her husband. Oh. Boy, do they all look alike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love yeah so that. Look, look at these. Yeah. Them two, especially. Oops, I went back too far. Francis, Marita, and Robert Donaldson. 
Oh. Little and little and little fur basket thing. I have one like that of my grandfather sitting on fur. Oh. They definitely look like siblings. Look they look their little smile. Yep. And the the older sister is just putting up with it. <laughs> they have the same haircut and everything. A little bowl cut. Yep. And that was it. Let's see if there were any in the G2G chat. Uh, did we see that one? Our family, not sure who's who. <laughs> I was I was drinking that day, so I don't remember who was there. Yeah. This is Ben. Oops, excuse me, Ben. Oh, that's a big... The photo was taken in 1926 on the occasion of wedding of my wife's maternal grandparents. Thank you, Karen, for 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 describing that. I'm just announcing some of them as as Sarah's going through the pictures. <laughs> Look at this kid's face. She's, She's like excited. Well, and so is the kid next to her. Yeah, her too. And they're all kind of. Yeah, they are. Look pretty excited. My class pictures weren't like that. We weren't happy about being at school. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay. Paul, how many people think it's a real dog? So it's a little lamb. That little lamb oh. next to him is currently in my grandmother's house. It has survived all these years. It's an old, old, old lamb. I guess it kind of looks like a lamb. Now that you say it, now that it's out there. Karen, tell him how to find that information at the bottom of his uh, profile. Photo of... We didn't see this one. That was a nice photo. They're all dressed up. And they're Sunday best. Yeah, but that was last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is an old photo that's very um, clear. So this is my great-grandmother, Anna, born in 1860. This, this photo's got to be 65. She, she looks about four or five. That's a very early photo. Very early. And apparently their father was killed in the Civil War. That's a cute one. These weren't it. Bow? Yeah, that's a bow in her hair. That's, that's yeah, a fun picture. That's a big too. bow. Holding on to the baby. Mm hmm. That's sweet. Oh, they're that. all leaning? Huh? They're all leaning. Yeah, I think it's a lot. They kind of probably took the picture. Sideways. I don't know. Let's look. Yeah, I think so. You're right. Mm -hmm. Different approach to the subject of children. A five generation photo. So, children of a children of a child of a child of a child of a child. <laughs> okay. Breeze through these because we want to talk about the Wiki Tree Challenge a little bit. It's kind of I up. do. I want to hear all about Johnny Pearl. Oh, yeah, these were the same. I knew it. I and knew they it. put them together there, yeah. I knew it. I was pretty positive it was because I recognized the, this girl and little overalls. Can I, can I share my screen when we're done just for a flash before you move on to... Okie dokie. Oh, look at that long, long, that beautiful dress this baby's wearing. Baptismal dress. Nice that somebody wrote on the back who they were. Mm hmm. Leslie and Grace. Oh, I do like that photo. Okay, that was it. That's it. That's it. Can I share my screen real quick? Yes. It's and then fast. we can move on to the Wiki Tree Challenge. Um, that one. The, um, Greg was talking about a new program that he wrote, and this is what it looks like on a profile. It's on my profile page, which is Golden 7. So if you want to see what the new program, the new app he did, that's what it looks like. Oh. Okay. Chat, Moving chat on. Okay. Were, I guess that's what you got, they were chatting about in the chat while I was looking at photos. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So the Wiki Tree Challenge, for those of you who aren't, aware so it's our year-long challenge where each week we take on a different genealogy guest star and we try to improve their tree on wiki tree 
So we have a team of people working together. Um, and you, Mindy's the proud mama of the team. Yes, her Mindy proud is the face. coordinator of it. So this week we're actually working on Johnny Pearl, the creator of DNA Painter. We had him on on Wednesday. He, we interviewed him, and he, he was it was so great. He we kind of changed our time. It was eleven where he was, eleven p.m. because he's in the UK. So he popped in. Um, so how are we doing so far, Mindy, with the uh, Johnny Johnny's week? I think we're doing good. It always starts out a little bit slow because you only have so many profiles you can work on until they start branching out. Um, but as of this morning, we have 39 people already up on the score sheet for him. We actually have a total of 81 signed up. So there are a couple of the branches that have hopped out into that eighth generation now, which is really cool to see. Um, mm -hmm. So there's more profiles available for people to work on. Yeah, and when we started on Wednesday, um, he wasn't connected to the tree. And I think as right. of, I think it was maybe Thursday or Friday, we already had him connected to the tree. Yep. Um, do we have a, do we know, did we keep track of what connection that made? What, that, if I think you, you understand what I'm saying, who we connected him to the tree. What connected sure. him to the tree? Yes. What profile? What profile connected him to the tree? Look that at her one, ringing sure. along. Charles, if you're trying to, to, to follow what Sarah's doing, don't. She moves way <laughs> too fast sometimes. I do move too fast. I just kind of zip along. What is he asking? <laughs> Who, which, which profile? No, 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 no. I, he's just brand new, so he's trying to keep up. So oh, sorry, what profile connected him to the tree? Mm -hmm. Do we know? No, we don't. Okay. No, we don't. Maybe Did you look at how he's connected on um, on the bottom, though? Oh, I guess that that probably would help us. Okay, so who is he most closely connected to? To this looks like Gordon Kirkpatrick. Let's because we only oh, have Johnny out to his great grandparents. Hmm. Um, Benjamin Molesworth does have a comment off to the side here that said that had fun last week. The Australian team went crazy. So obviously the gentleman in England has a connection to Australia. That is, oh yeah, so probably. So which of us great grandparents? Probably a side person we added, I would assume, maybe. Um, where know. does he connect to? So, yeah, unless you know his lines, you won't know really. I'm sure somebody in the team, maybe they know, or at least Sarah, the other Sarah. The private husband of Suzanne Brasil? I, I can't see it. It's very hard to read. Oh. Is that, oh. Is that Donnie is that, Brasil? That's a wiki trier. That is cool. Wait, maybe not. Let's not open her. Just kidding. But yeah, so another Who's week her her husband? Husband in the middle of his connection to yeah. Gordon Factory. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> and then, yeah, so that's cool. And it looks like it came off of his father's side off of Rosa Benjamin's, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Joseph Hill. Um, so yeah, so he is connected now. At what point we connected him, I don't know, but I'm and sure Karen, some, I'm sure we can figure, I'm sure there is a way for us to figure out. Karen says lunch. that that is Sarah Mason knows his lines and that it's through Ronnie, Rion Brooks work. That's what she's saying. So she must've been, Karen must've been having fun in the challenge this week. Mm-hmm. Did we, do we know if we broke through some of his Irish brick walls yet? No. I know we have some Irish experts working on it. We have Amy, our, we have Amy working on his Scottish and... and Is that Smith. Amelia Gilpin? Yes. Mm-hmm. And we're back to 1760 on the IR. Irish line, so she's mm -hmm. still got some work to do. That is impressive, though, to be able to go back to 1760. Um, amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I want somebody to take my Irish line. Actually, I may have break, broken through it recently, but we'll Mine see. Mine, too. I have an Irish brick wall. I did it through DNA, though. I haven't, 
I'm, we're trying to find people on the ground to do some testing over in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Karen Lowe is saying that um, it was probably through Ronnie Brooks' work, the Wiki Treeer, and a lot of her husband's ancestry was already done, so it's probably a connection to that. And then, but also a lot of people were working on it, so maybe we don't know exactly when it got connected, but. Um, Do you have any Jewish experts for his paternal grandfather's side? Lewis would like to know. Do we know that? I don't think we have anybody specifically for that yet. But I'm sure. I'm sure we do. We just don't uh -huh. have, we haven't connected with them to connect them with the connection challenge. There we go. Right. They're talking about the Hill folks from Ireland. And those yeah, are we have, so far we have 19 people that have generated, um, have generously donated or offered their time to go ahead and, and help these captains out and the team members out with different locations. So that list is just really dynamic. We're trying to grow that list, but. Uh, Karen, are you implying that he's a hill folk, as in he's a leprechaun? If Johnny Pearl is a leprechaun, we all need to get to know Johnny a lot better. Because he can, he can show us the pot of gold. I That's know. <laughs> and for people that haven't participated yet, you want to make sure that you um, look at the G2G forum post. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at that anyways, just to see how they're doing with it. Uh, you, you have this board for chat. He's running and we have a spreadsheet to keep track of which profile we're working on so we don't have two people working on the same one. There he is. There's Johnny. Yeah. This is, and then we also have the Discord where a lot of the chatting is happening where people are saying like, oh, I did, we did this and we found this or can you help me with that? So tell us the words to put in the search bar for the challenge to be able to find the newest challenge post. So so if you go to the main right? right. If you scroll down, it's actually one of our one of our featured um, little blurbs here. So you can click on the Wiki Tree Challenge, and then it has the current G2G posts or current. You sometimes we'll have the posts to the the live cast if that's coming up. But right now it's the G2G chat for Johnny's week, and all the help information about the challenge is on this page. So, and then let's look at the. Tr I guess we can look at the track really quick. Nope. We got, man, we, looks like we're doing good. Doing good. Got Over a thousand edits already. Wow. And we've created 108 profiles so far. Ooh, what a love. fun challenge all year long. Mm-hmm. You must be some kind of proud mama there, Mindy. I think it's fun. I do too. So, I know that our, at least so far, our genealogy guest stars have been pretty excited about it as well. Uh, oh, so Jenny next, Baldwin's coming up next. Yeah, Jen is next. And then in February, we have Henry Louis Gates Jr., Judy Russell, Kirsty Gray, and Thomas McCanty. So, and then we'll slowly release who the next months are. Hey, Ellen Thompson Jennings. She hmm? can't wait until next week. She wants to work on Jen Baldwin's post. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I know a lot of people, everybody has been really excited. Wiki Treeers, the guest stars, um, there's been chatting about it on Twitter a lot and other social media. So it's pretty exciting, I would think. Please feel free to share anything you see about this on your own social media mm -hmm. channels. Definitely. And um, maybe if you, so even if you didn't register for a current week, you can still participate. Maybe you won't get points, but you're still helping the global tree. You can still, you can still register for February. Um, how do how do how do they register for each uh, month? Because it's monthly, right? They can register monthly. Right, and that that post is in the G two G. And you actually, if you, to, if you go to Johnny's that you were just on. For mm -hmm. his week, there's a link to the current registration post. Mm, okay, so yeah, register now. So you register a month in advance. So we have the registration for February. So there you go. 
And does anybody have any questions about the wiki tree challenge? Anything you want to add that I didn't that we didn't say, Mindy? I think you got it. So Lewis says your wiki tree challenge is a superb promotion that's not getting enough publicity, but it should pick up with the great names and bloggers you've got come in. I, I, it is exciting. It's our, part of our year of accuracy. We're trying to get, you know, trying to get WikiTree out there and, you know, make it as the most accurate thing on the web. Every time Benjamin Molesworth says profile improvement project, he, he does it by the acronym. And so I think he's talking about PIP coming <laughs> along and jazzing up our profiles. Is yeah. that going to be doing it in a kilt? That would be great. Please, Pip, come and jazz up our profiles in a, in a kilt. Please. <laughs> Pip is not here today. So, oh, well. But, yes, yeah, so any questions? Chris, Chris liked my most accurate thing on the web. Most accurate thing on the web. Not, no, it's not an easy task, but that's our goal. Our goal is to be the most accurate. Um, tree out there and i think we're doing a really good job with it but people are always shocked when i say there's a project that works on nothing but sourcing people or, or, or making the tree healthy so mm -hmm. accuracy is big and this is great because mindy and her crew are working on accuracy in the profiles for well-known genealogists mm -hmm. And so we're parents. all learning from it. I mean, you know, we're, we're making new friends in the Discord chat. But also, you know, I found out places and resources to look for records that I didn't know how to look for before. So, you know, I was one of those people that was like, oh, I'll never look anything up for Poland or Russia. <laughs> you know, it won't do any good. I don't read the language. But you can read the indexes. So, and then you find mm -hmm. one of these wonderful experts and they translate it for you. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's looking to see how they're related to Johnny Pearl. How am I related to Johnny Pearl? Let's see. Um, I got to look. I'm going to look too. Relationship to me. I want to do the connection finder because it's not directly. I'm 27 degrees from him. Oh, mom, through you. <gasps> mom, my mom is still watching. That's really rare. Look, through my mom. Oh, I guess. Okay, let's. Okay, let's. Let me walk everybody through how to you check. Gotta their connect, their you got to connect. You got to connect his Irish side to get me connected to him. Okay, so, so we go to Johnny's profile. I'm no relation. We go relationship to me. Now this will try to find a direct connection, like a direct lineage. But if you click the connection finder, oh, okay. ta-da! And I'm connected through my mom through the writer side. That's cool. Okay, I found him. Through the, hill. Connect, through the hills, to the, yep. through the hills. Yep. <laughs> I'm 27 degrees from Johnny. And just so everybody is aware, if you have their wiki ID, we can quickly search for them in the search tab up here, and it'll take us directly to his profile if we know his wiki ID. Fun fact. Fun facts from Sarah. <laughs> yes. See me every week, Saturday mornings for fun packs. <laughs> so Lewis, Lewis also wants us to work on the Jewish line so he can connect. And I want you to, to work on the Irish line so I can connect by blood. Oh, he, Maggie wants to be connected by blood. By blood. I want to be a blood. I want to be a blood sister. Blood connection. Okay. I think we have, we're talking about blood now, so. Anybody have any questions? You, now you know how to see how you're connected to Johnny because now he's connected to the tree. Um, and yeah, I guess we will see you guys on Wednesday where we wrap up Johnny's week. Is Johnny coming on on Wednesday, Mindy? Are we doing it he at six? Be, yes. Are we doing it at six p.m. again next Wednesday? Uh, I'm not sure. Because eight p.m. would be like one a.m. for yeah. him. So, okay. Yeah, we're supposed so to do six p.m. Six p.m. Wednesday, we'll have Johnny on, and then are we also going to have Jen on at 6 p.m.? That I don't know yet. So, to be determined, Johnny will still be wrapping up Johnny's week and starting Jen's week on Wednesday. 
So tune in. Uh, if the time changes or anything changes, we will let you know via G2G or something. So just keep on the lookout because we're trying to accommodate to our guests' times, which what works best for them. So until Ben, until ben Molesworth should be a guest and do him in the middle of the night. I mean, if, the world. If, if, we, if we didn't have such a full house already on Wednesdays, I wouldn't mind inviting more people, but we barely can fit the people that... Yeah. We almost couldn't fit Cece and her son if they would have been separate screens. <laughs> so, okay. Until Wednesday, my friends. People are still posting their connections to Johnny in the chat. Oh, well, continue is that. Go over to the Facebook post and continue doing that. That would be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So then we, you can just post how you're connected to Johnny. Okay. We are, time is up. That's it. I'm leaving. I'm gonna, goodbye all.